can't tell you how much I just absolutely love this guy. I miss you. Max, how, how you doing, man? Dude, I miss you, brother. It's always such a pleasure to be on the show. Thank you for having me. And I'm um, great. We were just talking about, you know, I got that new infant in my life and uh, it's just the, it's the 4 a.m. diaper change, just making sure you don't turn on too many lights, but you still can see what you're, you're cleaning up. And uh, it's the best though. It's, it really is amazing. Her smile, every time she, she laughs or smiles, it's, it's the greatest thing I've ever seen. So having a great time. I'm going to ask you to tell me more about her in a few moments, but off air, Max and I were talking, well, I guess we'll have this off air conversation on air. I said, Max, cause I have a 12 year old, she's 12 now. I said, have you been, you know, I'm sorry to be TMI. Have you been pooped or puked on? He's like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everything oh you know, get ready bit. for that don't don't get into the parenthood business baby that's right all right max is hanging out you guys uh you you, you already kind of you know started with this but just tell me about your daughter edie T just talk about her she's the best man you know i think i think a lot of parents can relate that you just you don't know what to expect when that little person comes out into the world and i and i just when she came out into the world and she just peed on my wife's shoulder right away and i just <laughs> i knew it was it i was it i was in for the long run and Every day, it's amazing. She just does something new, and you can't believe it. You're just so in love, and and uh, and I can't wait to write a bunch of music about her, just like my wife, and and uh, keep keep the ball rolling. It's been amazing. And I believe you said she has the longest eyelashes, something like that, right? She does. She got her mom's big blue eyes, of course, and then she got you know she I have I guess I have pretty long eyelashes. She got my eyelashes, and and she's uh, she's she's so she also I have I have hairy ears. I told this to somebody else, but uh, in my original lights down low video. I had this old person makeup on. They like we progressively got older in the video, and my one of my best friends came to set. And he's like, "Wow, they even put hair on your ears." And I was like, "Nah, that's just me." <laughs> that, that was that. And so she already has that. I feel bad for her. I'm gonna have to apologize to her for giving her that genetic makeup. I have never noticed that, Max. I guess uh, you have to take a closer look next time. All right. <laughs> Congratulations, Max. That's, Thank that's you, beautiful. Brother. Of course, Color Vision, your album. It's it's been out for a minute now. Uh, you work, get, talk about this album. I know you got some new stuff, you know, coming up, you know, all that, which we'll get to, but you worked on this album for four years. Obviously it's had uh, some success, you know, talk about this album for, for a second, if you don't mind. It's been amazing, man. You know, I, I think that I came into it with the first song was, this, was love me less. And, and I really wanted to, to do a full theme. I, I feel like I've, I'd always put out music and I, I was, I was proud to put out the music, but I always admired artists who really created a world with each album. And I really tried to do that with this one and, and the Rubik's Cube being a life-size Rubik's Cube for what we, you know, I'm sitting on for the album and the actual music. I just wanted it to feel like a full journey. And, uh, and, and it's been amazing. The fans have been so cool about, uh, about that journey and given so much love to all the songs. So I, I've had a great time and it's been inspiring to start working on the next record while I'm still promoting this one because it, it just gives you a framework of, of what you want to create for, for people and hopefully it brings some joy to their lives. So can it's been tell, a you... wonderful time. Can you tell an album when it's just a bunch of singles versus a complete album? Can you just tell, you know, by listening, for example, someone else's album, like that's just a bunch of singles yeah, versus to a story, so to speak. Totally. I, I, I can tell. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. I just think that it's a different experience for, for a fan. You know, you, you can listen to a single and just be so, so into it and maybe not even know who the artist is and just love that song forever. And then, you know, there's certain albums that change you. And I think every artist wants to create their Purple Rain by Prince. They want to create their full world that you can look back on years later and say that was a moment in time that I created a full space a, a full theme a full aesthetic and and that's uh and, and it captures time in a really beautiful way so those are the albums at least for me that I, I I can see I can smell them I can feel them I can see what it was like when I heard it for the first time and I yeah. feel like that's a special thing to try to go for and and that's always the goal for an artist like me at least yeah mine was Thriller was yours Purple Rain of course, Thriller, of course, too. Of course, that's, Man. you know. Max, I'm not sure if I've ever asked you this, but have you ever been mistaken for the wrong celebrity or, or been mistaken oh. for yourself? Like, hey, you look a lot like that Max dude. You know, one totally. of Totally. People, I, for some reason, especially when I do college shows and stuff, um, and I go to very remote places in the U.S., I'm in a Starbucks somewhere, like, in the middle of Alabama, and there's still like really OG fans of when I did this movie Rags on Nickelodeon, like a whole other lifetime ago. And sometimes people cannot believe they just they're like, why would he be in a Starbucks in, you know, like in in the middle of Alabama? So they, they freak out and they, they don't believe it's me. And I'm just like, it's I'm just doing a college show at whatever, you know, <laughs> University of Alabama. Where is this? It's like, it's not a big deal. It's totally cool. Nice to meet you. 
but uh, but that's always really funny to me that they do the double take and they just it's because of the location they're like why are you here in my small town but those are always the coolest too because like when i'm in new york or la or something it's just it's people people are more expecting of it they're like oh what's up but it's really special when you're in a small place that, that people really appreciate it so that's always dope and sometimes i used to get mistaken for joseph gordon levitt but uh not not as much as the rags thing which is funny True or false, you are a uh, a massive gamer. Like you are, like it's your thing. Yeah, you know, I really love, uh, I mean, I'm not into a lot of games, but when I get into a game, I'm, a, I'm an obsessive personality for sure. And with, there's this one game called League of Legends that I'm sure, yeah. you know, people who know it, know it. And uh, and I got really into it to the point where I had to get like these, these blue light glasses because my eyes were freaking out on me because I was staring at the screen too much and I had to take a break. And I'm the type where people know, like back in the day, the Xbox had the the red ring of death, which meant that you had like three rings on your Xbox 360. And I was playing Grand Theft Auto way too much. And so finally the th red ring of death came and I felt like that was my universe sign. So I gave it to, to a family member. I, instead of getting it fixed and getting back into, I gave it to a family member. So it's one of those addictions I get in and out of and try to, you know, you know, I got a baby now, so I gotta, I gotta stay off my gaming a little bit, but yeah. Wait, you, get, you gave the broken fun. Xbox with the ring of, three rings of death to a family member so gave him a broken <laughs> xbox but the, yes but they wanted that and they're like yo i know how to fix this easily if you give it to me i'll just get it done and and that just felt like a universe moment of you know what i've been spent like too many hours by myself playing grand theft auto i should just give this to somebody who will appreciate it more man gta is a game it's hard to get out of that's that's i know i know the feeling all right, Max is hanging out, you guys. I know you can't uh, tour at the moment for obvious reasons, you know, but uh, it's it's going to happen at some point. Clearly, mm -hmm. I think there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, are you I are you having tour talks at least to get get the ball rolling? Totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's all the tour talks, and I feel like everybody in in the music game is just making doing the tour talks, even when they know it's not realistic. But now it's starting to get realistic. You know, I have friends who just do shows in New Zealand, and people don't know they're they're chilling in New Zealand, so they're having. 20,000 person festivals with no masks on. Wow. I just had a friend who went out there and she she quarantined for two weeks and then she played just a legitimate 20,000 person festival. Was that Alice in Wonderland? Yeah, Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was chatting with her on, on social. Oh. It's so crazy to think that she, yeah, it's, it's normal in New Zealand. It's crazy. I mean, you know, good for them. They, they're doing their thing, but it definitely, it, because it's on our, our earth, <laughs> the fact that it is happening somewhere is really nice. And uh, yeah, I already have tour dates getting ready for, this album, I'm hoping to tour the next album I'm working on now and the current album together, just sort of like how Ariana Grande said, it's kind of nice to do two albums at once. So working on that, it'll be cool once the world can get back into it. Talk about, you know, people always want me to ask you about, you know, sugar stories. And now give me, give me a sugar, a little Mosey and, and an Olivia Bryan story, because of course they're on the remix. <laughs> give me a little something about them. Oh, that's been cool. It's been a, a very eclectic, uh, diverse mix of humans, which I thought was awesome. Cause I mean, the original song, just you know, having Suga get to 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 sing in Korean, to rap in Korean, and be a part of it in his native language, that felt like a really wonderful, unique thing. And it's been so cool. The fans have been so supportive of it. And with Lil Mosey, of course, you know, he had Blueberry Fago earlier in the year, and I just felt like the two Blueberry songs had to come together. So you know, I asked him to be a part Why of it. I, I didn't think of that. Oh my, of I course, know. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people aren't thinking of it, which is totally cool. But if they're if people are wondering why Lil Mosey's on it. That was it. I was like, oh, my God, what other time in history am I going to be able to cross over two Blueberry songs ever? So he was so cool about it. He was all about it. He had like a Blueberry soda he wanted in the video. It just felt it was just it was too natural. So he came. He was so cool. And what's so funny is I feel like basketball unites me and all of my favorite collaborations because with Sugar, that's how we bonded. And with Lil Mosey, it was the same thing. You know, when we first met, we talked about basketball and he was a basketball player and then he got injured. And that's what got him into rap. So you know, it's like my diehard Knicks fandom is always, it's its the thing I talk about with most collaborations. So that was now, cool. It, does Olivia O'Brien have something blueberry in her, you know, world or? What? That, she she's just awesome. I mean, I, I think in the end, I just wanted a really <laughs> amazing female singer. I just felt like, I was like, you know what? I Like, I was really inspired by, you know, Jack Harlow, who I've been been talking to for a bit now and I've been loving that he's been blowing up with what's popping when he put out the remix what's popping I was like that's a dope way to do it like involve a bunch of artists rather than just one new feature or whatever else and with Olivia I've always wanted a female perspective on the song and I've known her since Nash jumped on lights down low and we met at one of the shows and she had I hate it, hate you I love you and she's just an incredible artist so she jumped on and and I think she just likes blueberries too so there wasn't as natural of a connection as the little Mosey thing but she's just an amazing singer and just sounded great so that was the reason we brought her and everybody just was cool together it was great Blueberry Eyes, the remix, Ooh. of course, featuring Sugar. 
Lil Mosey, Olivia O'Brien. Uh, is there anything else we need to say about this song? And do I do we just hit the red blinking button? Just hit it, baby. If people don't know it, I hope you enjoy it. It's a it's a it's a nice diverse mix, and I hope people uh, get a little little funky, feel a little little, little good. I don't know. <laughs> feel Here we go. Good. All right, Max, you're an artist, but you are also a uh, a fan. What is the oh, yeah. best best live performance you have ever seen in your life? Not wow. you, someone else. <laughs> so, yeah, I've I'll get to you in a second. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. <laughs> uh, it was me in in twenty. I was so good. Uh, I was so good. Um, I I think. I saw Bruno Mars at the Hollywood Bowl uh, probably like six years ago. He, it was Pharrell was opening for him. It was his show. And man, it was phenomenal. I mean, he had his band, he's out there. And I remember that he did this moment in his song, Gorilla, where he just did this like hump motion. And then there were um, fireworks that exploded out of the high <laughs> Hollywood Bowl. He did the hump and the fireworks <laughs> flew out. And I just thought, how can you do it better than that? How you hump and there's fireworks that explode? What are we doing here, guys? So that felt like the, I will never forget that moment. And now all I want to do is do that in the show. Just, you know, boom, hump and the, and the fireworks hit. You got to work that out. Somehow get the hump fireworks. I mean, if you don't do that, Max, I mean, come on. Now that's, that's on your bucket list for sure. Max is hanging out. Now on to you. Two-part question. Ooh. Your best performance and your worst one, your worst gig. So it, it basically. Oh, yeah. Something went, yeah, give me one where everything went totally right and one where everything went straight to hell. Wow. I would say um, actually one of the most special ones ever was with iHeart. I did um, Jingle Ball in Tampa a couple of years ago, incredible arena shows with like Lizzo and Sam Smith and everybody was there. And I forget there was one artist who couldn't get there and I got a little bumped up on the, on the list, on the slots. And uh, it was just like the whole arena was there. It was whatever, 20,000 people. And, and what was cool is that I knew it wasn't my show. And anytime you're on a big lineup of those people, you don't know how the show is going to go. But for some reason, um, it was just this magical set. And I was just, you know, I'd, I'd say something like, oh, keep it spicy, Tampa. And the whole crowd went crazy. And I think there was just some magic in it as a recent show where you just like, you realize that moment where you're connecting. Like for the first time, these people maybe didn't know you. They knew some songs, Lights Down Low or whatever else. But that magical moment, I'll never forget because it just felt like, a whole 20, that's what artists do it for. When 20,000 people feel like one cohesive energy and you just feel this joy that uplifts you, that's, those are the shows we live for. What does that feel like? the opposite end. What, what, is that? What, is that, what does that feel like before you go to the bad? <laughs> Ooh, is it just yeah, a, let's stay in the good for just a second. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like, it feels like your, your purest bliss. It's, it's, it's like you're floating and everybody's floating together and you forget your, your negative energy, you forget your judgments you forget where you are sometimes. And it's almost, you know, I think that's what we all want. We're all doing whatever we're doing so we can connect with other people. And, and in the end, you know, whether people are haters or lovers, they do it because they want to connect. And, and I think that when you hit that blissful moment, that's what's addicting. That's why artists don't want to stop doing what they're doing because it's just, you keep chasing that and you keep trying to, you know, win people over or whatever else. But when you hit that, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's comparable to seeing your daughter smile for the first time. It's right below it, you know? And it's that's what's what's amazing about it, you know? And I can't wait to have my daughter at one of those shows. I'm, I'm wow. I can't even imagine the bliss when it's 20,000 people, I can see her in the front row, you know? So yeah, it's uh, it's the most magical thing. What a and, rush. Uh, now, now for the one where, that, we, the, the one that the went work. straight to hell. What, what about this Yeah, one? Yeah, we gotta go from the good to the bad. Um, <laughs> the one, you know, the one that always comes to my mind, it was, it was my first festival a long time ago. I was at my first festival. And I was opening for this band called OAR. I don't know if people know them, great. If people don't, it's kind of different than my thing. If you know my, my thing, you know, it's, it's pop music. I love my pop music. And, uh, and OAR is a little more like jam bandy, I would say. And um, they were lovely guys, but I'm opening for them. I don't know why they put me on the lineup opening for them at Summerfest in Milwaukee all these years ago, uh, but they did. And it's a bunch of people in the crowd outside. They're all smoking big cigars and just, they're waiting for OAR. And at the time I had no music that was out that people knew. And I made the bad mistake of a festival set of getting out there by myself on a keyboard for one song. And it was an unknown song to anybody, like probably not even to my fans. So I'm out there, I got my band, they leave the stage for a second. I'm just out there alone. There's probably whatever, like 7,000 people watching. And I'm in the middle of this ballad by myself. I can hear everything. And the whole crowd just starts chanting, O-A-R, 
O A R O, and I'm and I'm trying to you're trying to get through the song, and you have that like you have the booze and the O A R chant, and you're just trying you're just trying to get through this ballad. You can't even act like you're ignoring it. Like I didn't have in ears then, which is what musicians have now. You can kind of block out stuff. No, it's just raw me on stage trying to get through this song. And your whole heart just sinks into your chest. You're like, how do I never deal with this again? So <laughs> it is the true polar opposites of that blissful joy of 20,000 people and that darkest 7,000 people telling you, please get off the stage. We don't want to hear your music anymore. <laughs> God, I would ask you, how does that really feel, Max? But I think I know. So I won't go. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's not God, that's awful. All right. I got to talk about the my delivery room experience oh give and, it to, and, i love and, this and uh and i'm gonna my wife thinks it's hilarious when i describe it like this and i'd like you to respond to yours oh i will <laughs> uh, i describe my delivery room exp- of course my wife did everything i'm just a cheerleader she did everything as you know of course but i i, I look at it it was it was a horror movie with the happy ending yeah. that's how i describe <laughs> it i mean even to the point where the doctor said that they they were freaked out for a moment because my daughter was really pale which is a bad thing but mm-hmm. then they said Oh wait, the dad's really pale, and <laughs> and that, that that was actually a good thing. Like, oh, she's supposed to. That's how she. It's so genetics. It's, so everything was great, but a horror movie with the happy ending is how I would describe. How you know, <laughs> don't give out too much. It's a very yeah. personal moment. Let's, but we're how would on the radio you, right now. <laughs> how would you summarize your, that moment for you? I think it's a perfect way to uh, to say it. You know, I think for me because my wife ended up having a C section because my. Uh, daughter's head is in the 99th percentile. She got a big head and she had to get out of there. So I'm waiting outside the the delivery room for 15 minutes. That's the longest 15 minutes of my life. Just sitting outside patiently waiting to enter the room, knowing that Emily was by herself in the room. Uh, And then I get in there. It's a full house. There's like seven people in there. They're getting ready. And I feel like I just locked eyes with her because I knew it was all about her. I think those are the moments where you realize with your partner, what do they need? And obviously it was all for her. And she just told me, just don't say anything and just look me in the eyes and just keep telling me it's going to be okay. And just tell me how it's going. And so I just did that. I just kept talking to her and calming her down. And I almost lost all that fear that I had for the 15 minutes before, because I was just locked in with her. And then, yeah, you know, baby pops out. The nurses are like, we'll video for it. And so you can have this video for everyone. Give us your phone. It was so fun. They were like, we'll take pictures for you. No worries. We're just delivering your child. And also we're photographers very LA. Another day for them, so, no big deal. To- you know? Totally cool. They're like, yeah, just give us your phone. It's no big deal. We're just going to pop this baby out. Um, but yeah, like I said earlier, they give the baby to us and um, and literally the first thing she does, she just takes a big pee on my wife's shoulder. <laughs> she and Emily sees it <laughs> and they put the baby down. You know what I didn't know though? I didn't know, this isn't too much, but like, there's just like, there's this, there's something around the baby when she the baby comes out, at least for a C-section. I just wasn't expecting it's like a, it's the vernix that's what it's called it's the there's like white stuff which fun fact there's a bunch of skin products that are called vernix because it's supposed to be like protective for your skin just like the protection of a baby's skin huh. i didn't know that anyway not that you even wanted to know that but i i, think, I didn't know <laughs> i think maybe i that that might have changed my life in a way so there's that just changed my vernix you'll see it it's on a lot of skincare products because it's a thing but anyway yeah had the baby and then uh yeah, it's the greatest thing you've you've ever seen. And you don't even know what to expect when you see this this child or what you thought the baby was going to look like. I think that was the craziest part for me. I just was like, this is the person that's been in my wife for nine months? What's going on? Who is this? And it's just, uh, it's just it overwhelms you. And, and it was it was a, a horror movie that has a happy ending. They need more. We need more of those horror movies that have happy <laughs> endings. Let's do it. Why do they always got to end terribly? Let's I get know, a right? rom-com Good horror Lord. movie. Max is hanging out. Of course, Blueberry Eyes, the remix is out. Get on it. Of course, the album Color Vision, it's been out. Obviously, I hope you're already on that. But what else? I mean, you mentioned earlier you're working on, you're already working on some new stuff. Yeah, what what are you working on? That is the question. Yeah, uh, I don't even know if I'm supposed to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway because I've been so excited about this. Uh, but the next album, you know, I've had this this song, this single for it for a little bit now. And, uh, and I actually, I, I'm the biggest Dolly Parton fan in the world. All I think, whenever I'm in a bad situation, as I'm sure the Dolly Parton fans are, I just like, when someone comes in me or they send hate or whatever it is, I'm like, what would Dolly do? As people know the phrase, what would Dolly do? And, uh, and I'm, I'm manifestly, I'm gonna do something with her, but I sent her this song just because I'm such a big fan and I had watched her documentary and she sent me a letter back and it's framed in my house now. And, and she sent me a letter back saying she wants to work together and she loved the song and she was in my voice and stuff. So. 
Uh, anyway, that song is is going to come out before you know it, but uh, but I'm excited that she was into that specific song. And and uh, I'm I told my dad, I promise you, I'm gonna make this Dolly Parton duet happen. So that's exciting. I'm gonna I promise I'm gonna make it happen. I'm putting it on the IR Radio countdown. And, uh, and wow. yeah, working on the next album. That's 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 where I'm at. That letter is literally framed to my house because I couldn't believe. She's really she is the icon for me. She's Did the you one, get to so. work with Dolly Parton, Max? I mean, that is, I mean, wow. I mean, seriously, that's crazy, right? She just, I think she handles it so well. You know, this is the first time in my life that I've really had dealt with as much um, love and hate. I think as you grow in your career, you just get to a point where more people are paying attention and people will love you or hate you for who you are. And I think accepting people loving you for who you are is just as important as accepting people hating you for who you are and not trying to appease those people. And I think Dolly is such a great example of someone who just treats it with grace, just handles it with grace. Cause you, I can't, it's like, as such a big fan of someone like that, I can't believe someone would not like her or hate her for who she is. But also, you know, clearly I worship her because of the way she handles it. So those are, those are the people that you, you just try to carry with you. So if I got to work with her, it'd be the greatest honor of my life for sure. Uh, does your wife, Emily, I mean, we talked about this last time and I couldn't pronounce tarot card properly. It took me forever. Yeah. You know, I, I had to coach myself before this, you know, our, our next interview here. Uh, does she still have a, uh, a tarot card site or anything like th- Is that still a, still a thing? Yeah, yeah. She's still got it out there. She's mostly uh, focused on diaper and feeding life now. She's been yeah, no she's tarot cards for now. <laughs> getting into that, you know, <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, but she's still, of course, she's very spiritual with all of that. And she does crystals and tarot cards and and she's she's got uh she has this app uh that is really I'm really starting to believe more and more in all of the 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 spiritual and signs and all that stuff. Uh, what is it called? It's this app uh that basically tells you you know it's a horoscope type app, but sometimes it's like eerily accurate for what your day or what you're going through is like. Uh, and I'm into it now. I, I used to be a big skeptic, but it's uh sometimes she reads me whatever. I guess it's a horoscope. And I'm just, I'm just blown away how accurate it can be. Do you ever do that? Yeah, I've never done. I'm not really into the horoscope world, but of course I'm into the paranormal world. I have a podcast, Paranormals, which you know about, you know, has your wife ever had, you know, uh, and if she has, don't, she, you don't have to tell me about it now, but maybe I can get her on the pot. Has she had a paranormal encounter? Your wife? I don't know if it's, would I don't, would you say a psychic is paranormal encounter? I guess it depends on what they see or don't see. I don't know. Yeah. Well, she the, this, she has this letter from this psychic from like a year, two years ago, basically. And again, this is the kind of thing that's been getting me into it because it's everything from like, I have high blood pressure, this psychic said, to you're going to have one daughter. This was two years ago. Wow. That kind of stuff, which to me is kind of paranormal. It's kind of freaky when you have it written down on a piece of paper and then suddenly it happens, you know? And apparently the, the person was saying, you know, you're, why are you in so many airports? I, why are you, stop flying. What are you doing basically? And she was like, yeah, you know, my husband tours and I fly with him a lot and whatever. Uh, and, but the one daughter thing was definitely pretty, pretty wild. And uh, yeah, the high blood, I, hope, I gotta get my blood pressure checked, I guess. I guess so. <laughs> so All right, I, Max, I, yeah, goodness gracious. Max is hanging out. Max, big question, open-ended question. What are you most looking forward to? Simple question, most looking forward to in 21. What what do you want to see happen this year? I mean, you know, it's the obvious. I I hope we can get back to playing some great shows in person in whatever way. That's going to be amazing, you know? Uh, And and yeah, just morning music always gets me happy and uh, just watching my daughter grow up. It's the cool, I mean, you know, you got a 12-year-old now. It's just, I feel like every, every day you see something new happen and and, and now I'm going to get to look forward to that for the rest of my life, just like what she is like at every stage. So I feel like that's always my number one answer from now on. The crazy thing is when she starts to grow up and has opinions and thoughts that didn't come from you or your wife, Emily, like where, like she is her own person. That is, that's crazy to me. It still is. It's still crazy, you know? So cool. Even as I talk about Edie, I look in your eyes thinking about your girl and it's just, it's magical. It really is a nice thing that you can just connect with somebody who gets it in that way because it, it, it is the best magic in the world. It really, I've, I've discovered that it is, which is cool. Well, my daughter's 12, so maybe she can be a babysitter for you at some point. Hey, you let's know. go. Uh, Blueberry Eyes, the remix featuring Sugar, Lil Mosey, Olivia O'Brien. It is out. You got to be on Ooh. this track. It's spectacular. Uh, Color Vision, obviously the album is out. Get on it. 
Max is working on some new stuff, maybe something with Dolly Parton. Fingers <laughs> crossed. That the way you talked about it, it looks like it's you know got a good chance of happening, you know. But uh, I hope that goes down like you plan it. What am I forgetting to ask you? No, that's hey man, thank you. It's all beautiful stuff, and and uh, it's always a pleasure, man. I just I love. I feel like I've been on your show so many times. Thank you for always having me, and and I'm ready to. I'm ready to just anytime you need a co-host, I'm with you, baby. It's always the best time to hang with you and. And I feel like I, we, I gotta go find more paranormal activities to, to have, because I've, I've told you my ghost story a million times, it's not worth it, but there's gotta be some more. I gotta get some more ghost stories in my life so we can get into it. Tell you what, let's, let's do, I'll co-host one of my podcasts with me. <laughs> I would love to. You, I, I, got a, I got a case that, uh, that the lady doesn't wanna come on and tell the story herself. She wants me to tell it. I'm gonna have an expert give me her reaction to it. Why don't you co-host that episode with me? I'd be into it. I would love that. Are you into aliens too? Or is that a, a thousand oh, percent? Yeah, of All, course, right? Yeah. So yep, Man. Max, you're invited to co-host an episode of Paranormalish with me if you have time, if you would like. I would be any brother, anytime. I'm delighted. Gone. And anything that anything with aliens and all that good stuff. I'm I'm just I could talk for hours. So I'm you guys details on that coming up. All right. Max, <laughs> thanks for hanging up, man. At the end of every countdown, fist bump to make it official. Give me a little tap that camera. Fire! Boom. Yeah, baby.